One of the things that's always bothered me about religion and the church is this whole notion of self-deprecation and self-flagellation. And I don't think it's very healthy. I've often wondered where it comes from. But I think if one were to hypothesize that the church's origins were as a control mechanism for the masses, this might start to make a little more sense. Like I said, I don't think it's very healthy. For me, it's on par with this whole glorifying of ignorance, sort of everybody running around acting stupid. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's negative in that it sort of removes the pursuit of betterment, the pursuit of perfection. After all, we're just flawed, sinful beings. So the best we can really hope for is for someone to come along and pay the price for our flawed, sinful nature, and we might sort of slip in through the back door. And I often hear Christian apologists talking about how sinful and lowly and unworthy they are, and in fact being worthy of an eternal torment in hell. Even worse than that for me is this whole notion of God as perfect. I can think of an analogy, uh, you know, of a, of a furniture maker making a table, but the first time the table is used, say someone sets a pitcher of beer on it, it just falls apart like a cheap lawn chair. Would we blame the table for being inferior? Or we, we, would we look to the furniture maker and say, um, Hey Joe, that table that you made, uh, it fell apart the first, thing, the first time we used it. And would it be any better or any worse if Joe were to say, Oh no, I, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I knew that before I built it. That table, table's totally flawed. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? You know, and I often hear when it comes to the the discussion of sin and why we would deserve an eternal torment in hell, they always talk about these economies of scale. So they'll say, well, if you step on an ant, no real real impact, no punishment. If you were to harm someone's animal, someone's pet, um, we have laws about that and you're going to have to answer for that. And it's on an economy of scale. So it's going to be somewhat more punishment. If you were to attack or somehow injure or, or uh, otherwise uh, deprive a human being, a fellow human being of personal property, the punishment's going to be up here. It's going to be relative to the being that, that you've um, offended against. And of course, if you sin against God because he is such a supreme being, then the punishment is eternal tor- torment. And I have obvious problems with that. Uh, I think that your punishment should sort of be proportional to uh, the malice and the the damage actually, uh, you know, that ensues the action. And I don't think that's really proportional in this case. But more importantly, when I think about these economies of scale, I often wonder why they're not extended to God. How come he can create such flawed, sinful beings and still be saved harmless? still have clean hands. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If I damage a customer's vehicle, they may call me and say, hey, you, you, you wrecked our vehicle, we're going to need you to fix it. And uh, my liability or my punishment would be limited to fixing the damage that I caused to that single vehicle. If an automotive manufacturer produces vehicles on an assembly line with uh, serious design defects, They may be liable to recalling potentially hundreds of thousands of vehicles to make good for the defects that that were in the vehicles. And here we have God who's created everyone that's ever walked the earth, countless billions of people, and not a one without sin, apparently not a one worthy um, of the glory of God, save for his uh, one little boy. Where's the recall for that? Why is he still called perfect? If Joe were to make that flawed table and then every table thereafter was equally as flawed, they just all kept falling down, would we call him a master craftsman? I don't think so. He certainly couldn't have a claim to it. And he certainly wouldn't have any reason to keep blaming his materials, his tools, or the tables themselves. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'd like to know, where is the recall? Thanks for watching.